hello and welcome back to my channel in this video we are going to do hydrological modeling using the hydrology tool in ArcMap. what you see here is a dm and a boundary shape file of my study area which is tighter hills in kenya now i'm going to search clip raster so that i can clip this raster into this study area input your raster and specify the output extent click on the use input features for clipping geometry and specify the output raster data set so you navigate to the location where you want to store your output data and you type the name that you want it to be so i'm going to input the extension to it and you just click on ok now you just wait for it to process so that's our output that is the digital elevation model for area it is a title and i'm going to just change the color now that is the output and i'm okay with that color so the next thing we're going to do is you're going to go to the arc toolbox sorry it's taking such a long time to load this usually happens when you're trying to open your arc toolbox i don't know if this happens in your arc map but this it's something to do with the arc toolbox now under arc toolbox let's go to spatial analyst and then go to hydrology so the first thing we're going to do click on flow direction you want to calculate the flow direction that is the direction in which water is going to flow to in each cell so let's specify the output raster where we want it to be the flow direction raster so we yeah, are going to name it that you click save and then you click ok flow direction represent the direction where water in each cell is going to flow to so that's the output and you can see that these numbers these numbers represent direction in which water flows to so if you check online each and every number of these represent a direction in which water is going to flow to so it's not just random colors and numbers so the next thing we want to generate a basin so you just click on basin input your flow direction and then you specify the output raster you navigate to where you want to store it and then you just name it like you've done the other steps So that's our basin map and you can see here how it has shown the boundaries for the basin areas. Now let's go to flow accumulation. Let's generate our flow accumulation map and we input our flow direction raster and then specify the output data set. Flow, flow accumulation, sorry, it means it represents the number of cells whereby their waters have accumulated into that particular cell so if a cell has 50000 it means 50000 cells i mean water in 50000 cells have flowed into that particular cell that's the meaning of flow accumulation raster so if a cell has higher values, it means most of the cells, their waters are flowing into that particular cell. So now let's just wait for it to process. and that's our output map you can see the high value is at 562,000 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to classify these values. You can see it's stretched and you can barely see the white color. Yeah. We are mostly seeing the black so let's go to symbology. You can see it's stretched so we're going to classify it and I want to classify it into two classes so that I can be able to create something like a threshold. Now we're going to try many values so we can see which is the most appropriate now you can see it's at 216,000 so I'm going to change that and I'm going to start with 50,000 so that means the first color will be from 0 to 50,000 that's the black and the other one is above 50,000 now let's see so you can see we're seeing some streams there Remember the output of this flow accumulation is like a stream raster it shows us the stream network. Now let's try 10,000. Remember we want to see many streams. We want to have a value that we can be able to see a reasonable number of streams. So that's not so bad. We don't want the streams to be so many but we also don't want them to, to be barely visible. So let's try a lesser value like 5,000. Now, I think that's the perfect value, 5,000. So, let's change it. We actually were interested more in the values that have 5,000 and above. So, let's visualize it now you can see. When you zoom in, that's the stream network. So that's how our flow accumulation raster looks like. So now let's go back to our toolbox. And now what I'm trying to do, I want to have a raster that only shows the values that are above 5,000 because those are the values that I'm interested in. And right now I'm trying to look for the map algebra tool trying to look for it I thought it was in the raster area now let's just look for it okay let's try the geo processing I don't remember exactly where the map algebra is anyway you can always search for it in the search search bar so I don't know why I'm forgetting it. Anyway, there it is. So it was just under the special analyst. So you click on the raster calculator and we want values for the flow accumulation that are greater than 5,000. So you just input that expression there. And then let's specify our output raster where we want it to be stored. So I'm just going to store it there and I'm going to name it stream raster because it's a raster showing me the stream network and then we just click on save and we wait for it to process now that's the output So we go back to the ACT toolbox, to the hydrology tool, and let's click on stream order. We want to generate a stream order raster. So we input our stream raster, that is the stream raster, the one we obtained after doing the flow accumulation, after classifying it, and you put your flow direction, then specify the output raster. So the stream order indicates the level of branching. It tells you that if it's one, it's the first level of branching. So the higher the level, it means it's probably the source of the water. So that's it. That's our stream model. You can see we have four levels. And so when you zoom in, you can see each level has a different color. The number four is the highest level. 
So it means it's probably the main river. Well, number one means it's a tributary, probably the first tributary, the high, the lowest level branching. So here you can manipulate the colors of the various stream orders. Maybe you want them to look different from each other. So you can be able to identify each stream order. So you just click on apply and you click on OK. Now that's the end of my first video. In the next video, let's do more things. Thanks.